Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano video. So this one will be a bit different than the normal ones. Normally the markets and stuff like that make up a small section at the end of the videos. This one is going to be a lot more focused on the markets. I'll start out by going into the network update we're going to see on Cardano this evening. Two new parameter changes that will hopefully help some of the congestion. We'll talk a bit about that. But when I put out the video on the overall scaling for Cardano, I'll go deeper into that section. So the majority of this one will be looking at the overall markets because I get a lot of questions on it recently. So I look at Bitcoin, ADA, Cardano, I'll give my opinions on what I see in the markets, the levels I'm personally watching, and hopefully that is of some interest. As always, don't ever take any one video from someone as the reason that you buy or sell on any asset out there. Make sure you do a lot of research for yourself. Decide what the right opinion is for you. So look, if you get value, please do share it out there. Let me know your own opinions, thoughts below. Give the video a like. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Let's get into it. Okay, we'll start out here with the network update we're going to see tonight. So there's two parameter changes for Cardano. So everyone who's using the chain right now knows that it is congested. It can be slow at times to use. So what's coming out tonight will help that a bit. So what we're going to see is an increase in the block size. They're going to increase the block size by eight kilobytes, going from 72 to 80 kilobytes. On a very high level, what that means is it represents an increase of 11% in block size. So bigger block size, more transactions can fit in. So in theory, it should mean that 11% more transactions can fit in, but due to the composition of blocks, the way they're met up, it's not always going to have 11% more. So even though the chain is congested right now, we see the blocks aren't always full due to the way they're met up. It's kind of like each transaction that comes in to, to try and make up the block, they're all made of different sizes depending on how what the transaction consists of. Some transactions are going to consist of lots of native assets as well as ADA, smart contract transactions. They are bigger as well. We're waiting for the SIPs to help improve how the smart contract transactions are there to make them smaller and more refined. There is actually a post on this by Swagpool that I will link below that you can check out. There's lots of different discussion and I see things being added to it all the time. Talking about how the blocks are made up and different interests there. So you can see references SIP 33, SIPs 31 and 32 which really will help how things are made up on the smart contract side. So I'll get into all of that stuff a lot more when I do the video on scaling. Hopefully get that one out tomorrow. So the other increase we're going to see is the script memory units per transaction for the for Cardano mainnet going from 12.5 million to 14 million. So another increase of 1.5 million. So again, this is going to help with smart contracts in terms of what they can do in them and how much they can put into them. So again, I'll dive deeper into all of that type of stuff when I get the scaling video out. So looking then on the markets, a lot of questions on the markets right now. Where are we? If you look at this, it's fairly clear that Bitcoin is in a downtrend right now. Am I gone completely bearish? No, I never go bearish really on the cryptocurrency market. Never in the long term anyway. Short term, you can look at it and see Yes, we are in a downtrend. If you look here on Bitcoin, up at the very top, this was the all-time high. You take the first point, for me anyway, lots of people don't believe in technical analysis. I like technical analysis as a guide to where things can go. I don't get too deep down into it because I understand how important fundamentals are in the market, but I do use technical analysis as a guide of levels that I like to look at and give me some expectation of where things are going to go. So on the downtrend here, you can see top point is here and the next point that I set was this one here. So if you look down here then, if you're looking for examples of nearly perfect, perfect tests of a trend, then you have them here on Bitcoin right now. So you can see we had a test of it right here, got rejected back down, got some momentum again, come back up to test this same downtrend, got rejected at this point here. You can see the red candle trying to go back up again today and right now being rejected in around that level again. If we look on the four hour, you'll see it clearer. So you can see up here, we come up, tested it, rejected, right now in around that level again, trying to break through it. So all the time when you come up against trends like this, generally you get a lot of resistance at these areas. Personally, what I would like to see is if we can break it now on this next attempt, attempt 
that if we look at it here what you would like to see is coming up here closing the daily candle above this level here which would mean in the 38 to 39 thousand dollar region you will then potentially get the pullback to test this level again before getting the bounce to again it's not going to be straight up lines you're always going to have up and down but then once we get up to forty nine thousand dollars this is where i see the big resistance level there again i would expect up at that level to have a pullback before trying to run at it again before getting through the reason for 49 or for forty one thousand dollars for anyone who is new here You'll see this is a level we've talked about multiple times. It's a level that has given a lot of resistance, has given support at times as well. If we look all the way back here, let's zoom in on this, all the way back to when it was an all, this was back in January, 2021. We set the all time high up around here, just over 40, so $41,000. Then we got rejected back up, couldn't break it back down, finally broke it with a big strong green candle here a lot of times when you break resistance it takes a really strong move to break them so then when we come over here when we fell down through it huge red candle here it then became resistance again so when we come back up we were rejected back up we were rejected off this line and the same around here the first time we came up we briefly got around over it but rejected back down finally got above it and then it flipped into support so the next time we come back down to test this level it was support all the way back over here again the first time we fell it was support so this is where i was talking about that 41 was either going to be our support or it was going to be the edge of the cliff where we fell down into the low 30s support the first time but unfortunately the next time it just wasn't strong enough and it was that cliff brought us all the way down to roughly thirty-three thousand dollars was the low point here so again that's what i'm looking for on bitcoin i'm looking to see can we get through this downtrend here come up to the 41 Again, I'd expect resistance there to get rejected on the first time and then hopefully we can get enough of buying support to push us up through. As I said, this is from the technical side. There's news coming out all the time. China could decide to ban Bitcoin. Russia could. They could bring out something positive. We see countries coming out with good news all the time that can help push the, these things up, can accelerate the timelines on how, things, how the markets react in both a good and a bad way. They can... Hurry this up to push the markets right up through all of these levels and these technical levels that I've marked wouldn't make all that much difference. But they can also have the opposite effect as well and push it to the downside. If we do get rejected here and things start going right down, then $31,000 is the area that I'm looking for on the underside. But right now, I think the sentiment is starting to get a bit more positive. So hopefully it is to the upside. But all of us keep both targets in mind. So if we look at the ADA price then, where are we on the ADA price? A lot of questions, have we found the bottom for the ADA price? So this is on the daily. As you can see, we are in the same type of downtrend for the ADA price as well. So from our high on the beginning of September when we were getting smart contracts released, well, version one of them anyway, that's where the first point was. Back here then in November was the second point I set. And you can see when we got the push for Sunday swap going live, that was big fundamental news that things were going well for Cardano or that's what the outside world was looking at. And you can see we got the push, but again, another nearly perfect rejection in terms of the downtrend, in terms of the technicals, hit up here and got rejected down. Again, on the bottom side, 102 is the level we've been talking about for over a year. When we were back here, this is the same level in around that dollar, 102 is where we still had all of this support in around here. So that's what I'm personally watching is, can this hold? Is this going to be the bottom for the ADA price? Personally, I think it does depend on Bitcoin as well. Because right now, as you've seen, and you will see more when I talk more about the scaling solutions for Cardano and the timelines and around that type of stuff, we're still a little bit away from Cardano being able to really push to the upside. There is some positive stuff out there when you look at some of the L2s that are starting to build and lots of talk that's out there as well. I'll cover them in another video as well. But there's definitely lots of stuff coming up over the next while. But Bitcoin is going to play a role in this as well. So for me, this is a very, very strong level for ADA. Has been for well over a year now. Back here in February 21, when we hit the high up there at 156. When we came back down, it was always this area here that held as our support. 
even 156 if you start looking at these two highs here then again that's where we got our resistance this time as well so for the ada price i'm watching first off to see is this area held can we then or not can i would nearly say when or when we get the next push to the upside to see how this line reacts how this downtrend reacts then and we'll take it from there in terms of is it time to fill up your ada bags that is down to every individual no matter what type of stuff you see across social media, Twitter, YouTube, anywhere like that, always make the decision yourself because people will put out random headlines and everything like that. Some put them out just to get engagement and get interaction and stuff like that, even if it's not what they really think. So always look deeper. Don't just look at the headline of something. Do your own due diligence and decide what's right for you then. So there was this post here from who's it from news btc but it's based on sentiment the post they put out here where they were watching they track on chain data and they were looking at the wallet addresses so over a 10 day period even though the price was dropping 34 percent large addresses holding between 10k and 1 million ada at the end of that 10 days they then owned 113 percent more within that period so they were accumulating during that period so things like that are a good sign but always do your due diligence. Look into it, check it out and see what's really happening. A really good side if you're interested in diving deeper into the Cardano stats, what's happening is this one here, Cardano Blockchain Insights. I will put this down below. This is by the stake pool Cardano Fans stake pool. They put a lot of work into this, really great resource to have. This one here that I was going through is actually the distribution of ADA over different Shelly address wallets. So we'll say when you look at something like this, Shelly addresses within Cardano, just like Bitcoin, because it's a UTXO model, one person could have hundreds of addresses. So you don't know exactly where things lie with this type of thing, because you will know within your own Cardano wallet as well that you, you have one wallet which is staked, but you have multiple addresses in it. So it's, it's a good guide, this, this type of thing is a good guide to look at. But looking at an individual address on the Cardano blockchain doesn't always give you an insight into how much that person is actually holding. Because when you look at an Ethereum, Ethereum has one address per wallet. So in there, you have a general idea. But within Cardano, people can have multiple wallets first off, but within each of them wallets, you have multiple addresses. So I'll dive deeper into things like this in a future video as well. Hope this one has been of some use. If it has, let me know below. Share it out if you think others can benefit. If you want more videos like this, let me know as well. Or if you want me to stick to just what's going on in the ecosystem, that's all good too. Thanks for watching, guys. I will talk to you soon.